no. If dad hadn't told him, then saying, I believe, I believe, I believe, doesn't do a shred of good. You have to have something to believe in. You have to have a promise of God to believe in, an assurance of God to believe in. And if you don't have that promise, you don't have an assurance, then you, there's no use trying to talk yourself into having faith. I remember when I was a kid, out in front of my grandfolks' place, mountain across the road, and I had heard in Sunday school, I guess, that morning, or maybe it was in church, this little old United Methodist Church we go, out, used to go to way out in the country, Prospect United Methodist Church. And, um, and uh, there was about a dozen, two dozen people in there uh, worshiping the Lord. And I had heard this verse, that if you say to this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, then it'll be done if you believe it. And so I thought that what that meant was, when I got back home and I went out and I looked out, out the front uh, yard where my grandfathers live, and I looked across that mountain, I thought that if I just talked myself into believing that that mountain was going to move hard enough, that I could believe it hard enough to make that mountain move. And so I was, I was psyching myself up, really convincing myself that I was going to ask God to make the mountain remove and be cast into the sea, and then I was going to open my eyes, and it was all going to be gone. Well, when I opened my eyes, you can guess what I saw. Now, had God told me, lions, that mountain's in my way. I want you to go pray it into the ocean. Had God told me that? No, God had not told me that. That was just me trying to make up my own faith. Okay, now, faith is a gift of God. That's important for you to understand. It's not of works. You can't work up your own faith. God has to give you an assurance of something. And when God gives you an assurance of something, okay, you can trust what God has given you an assurance that he's going to do. Do you follow that? Picture some woman whose husband is lying in the bed in an ICU ward. Little, little monitor's going bleep, 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 bleep. And she sees the doctors out in the hallway. They're looking at x-rays. They're shaking their heads. They have grim voices. They come in and they tell her, it's not looking good for your husband. Um, I don't know how much longer he's going to be here. And you need to prepare yourself. And so she goes home. She prays. She fasts. She gets on her knees. And through the night, she's praying. And somewhere around 2 a.m., a calm comes over her. A divine assurance that the Holy Spirit gives to her she doesn't, it's not her doing this, it's not some self-hypnosis. She didn't do it to herself. But as she was praying, God assured her that her husband was going to live. She gets up the next morning. She goes to bed with her mind not racing and fearful, but her mind at peace. She goes into the hospital the next day with a smile on her face as she enters the ICU room. A nurse looks at her and wonders, what, what's she smiling about? And she says, my husband's going to be healed. How do you know? God told me. And the nurse shakes her head in pity, goes out and lets the doctors know she's not accepting reality in there. And then a couple of days later, the doctors are looking at new x-rays and they're wondering what happened to that tumor. <laughs> And they can't understand it. They say, it's a miracle. <laughs> and then another woman down the ICU ward hears about this. Everybody hears about it. But her husband's also lying in the bed. And people are talking about this first woman's great faith. And so the other woman's thinking, okay, okay, maybe if I can just believe as hard as she believed, my husband will live too. Okay, is that how it works? No, it's not how it works. You don't make yourself believe. You don't try to believe harder. You pray harder, but you can't make yourself believe harder. And in the end, God will give an assurance if he's going to heal someone. And if he doesn't give the assurance, then that means the answer this time is no. There does come a point where God's time for someone finally does come. There comes a point where no matter how much you pray, no, God's used this servant, and now it's time for that one to come home. And the Bible says in Isaiah 57, 1, that the righteous perish, no man considering that the righteous are taken away from the evil to come. 
And you know, I see people who pass away in the day and time in which we live, and I think to myself, you know, a part of me thinks, a part of me grieves for their family, not for them, not for those who die in the Lord. A part of me grieves for the family, but a part of me also thinks they may have just gotten out in time. They may have gotten out before something disastrous comes upon this world. None considering that the righteous is delivered from the evil to come. So there finally does come a point. But anyway, the point that I'm trying to make is that faith is not something you can work up. Faith is something that God either gives you or he doesn't give you. 